All right. Well, um, Flyers lose 7-5. Now, I'm going to start with the, the negative things in this game, um, as there, there are a good amount. Um, just looking at the stats and, and realizing it as the game was going on, the, the Avalanche had 50 shots in this game. Um, the Flyers had 10 penalty minutes, and the Avs won 3 for 5 on the power play, and the Flyers also had 16 giveaways. So those are some of the, the big reasons of why this game was lost. Um, Martin Jones definitely didn't have his best game, but the Flyers defensively still had the same issues as well. Um, I felt like some of those goals Jones definitely could have had, and some were just kind of weird, and the Flyers also had turnovers and, and, and all that stuff. Um, but as for the, you know, I guess more positive side of things, if you're looking at Sunday's game, the Flyers, when they went down one, one, nothing, it felt like the game was over. And when they went down two nothing, it was like, all right, they essentially had no sense of coming back in that one. Um, now in this game, they get the first goal and the game had a really good pace early, but if say the Flyers were to give up the first goal but you know they were able to battle back after they scored first and obviously Colorado comes back and they score four unanswered but the one thing that you know you got to give the Flyers in that in, in that regard is the fact that they they battled back and they got two in the remaining couple minutes of the period there that's a team that literally the day before the game was over you know I mean it, it, if Colorado had scored first or something like that but before I talk about you know the game and things like that, um, I really do want to talk about these lines. Uh, Lindblom with Kateri and Konechny. I mean, guys, how long have I been saying that line needs to be put back together? And it looked really good tonight. Lindblom scored his first goal. Um, Giroux goes to center with Frost on his left, JVR on his right. You have Lawton with Hayes and Atkinson. Um, Willman with Brown and McEwen on the fourth line. So I really do like those lines. Um, I don't, I like Drew at center. I like the third line with Hayes down there at the 3C. Um, I felt like the defense is fine. And, and, and again, for the Flyers, one thing that I noticed a lot in this game that they hadn't been doing was keeping possession of the puck for long periods of time. They had the puck for a while. Um, th- this game definitely is something to build on. And I know that sounds weird because they gave up seven goals, but when you weren't scoring and you score more than three goals for the first time since October 27th, that's definitely something you want to build on going into the next handful of games. The offense finally wakes up, but the defense still has the same issues. And obviously you can't keep playing like that. And obviously you can't really be looking for moral victories this early in the season when you need wins. So I, I understand all of that. Um, but I, I, you know, as I said, the first period had some really good pace. I mean, again, the Flyers get the one nothing lead from Drew, then they get a power play. And that's a moment right there where they might be able to do something. Um, and I thought their power play was actually really good in this game. They moved the puck well. Um, one thing that Jason Martinez had been saying on Flyers Daily was stationary targets is where the Flyers were trying to move the puck to. Guys were just standing still. And they didn't do that tonight. They moved. Yandel was very good at distributing the puck at the point. Um, there was a lot of good things from that area. Um, and sadly, the Avalanche would end up getting a shorthanded goal as the puck rolled over Drew Sick and O'Connor made a great pass. Great shot by Johnson. It really was just a tough play all around. Um, the bouncing puck on Drew and then, you know, it, it was a beautiful executed two-on-one. Um, it felt like the Flyers were definitely starting to get their chances, but JVR hits Provorov going down the slot. He missed that one wide. Abs go up. Um, McKinnon bursts through the neutral zone, hits it to Landeskog. That's definitely one I'd like to see Jones make the save on. Um, it was a beautiful shot, but it didn't even look like Landeskog shot that puck. He just, like, chipped it. Um, then the, the Abs get a power play off the ensuing faceoff. They score 3-1, new hook in the slot, and then McCarr gets another one where he's basically untouched. That's arguably the worst goal the Flyers have given up while down a man um, on the penalty kill this season. I mean, as much as everybody wants to look at Provorov on that play, Couturier was just standing still as well. I mean, all of them. It doesn't. It, it wasn't just on one guy. Um, it was just terrible. But that stretch where the Avs get two goals really quick, um, the shorthanded goal, then they get one off the rush, then a power play, and then another power play goal, Mike Yo calls his timeout. And that was like, all right, let's settle down here. Let's get back into this game. Calls a timeout, and then the Flyers, they go down and score. Really nice play, 4-2. Limblom finally scores, really good play um, from behind the net, connecting right in front. Limblom was there on the open side, um, and he scored. So Oscar finally gets his first of the year. I think that can give Oscar some some confidence. And, again, 
Lindblom was not going to succeed or do anything playing on the fourth line. So it's a good thing Mike Gill realized that and put him up there on the first line, and he ends up scoring. Um, Flyers get a power play. Albi Kubel takes a penalty for the Avalanche. Who actually, I thought Albi Kubel actually looked really good in this game. Um, and the Flyers score. Drew scores on a one-time really good penalty, really good power play. Excuse me. Um, lots of chances. Good puck movement. Nice play um, by Konechny to get that crossing pass over. Had two assists in the first period here for Konechny. Um, he, he definitely had a pretty good game. But um, early in the period, uh, Nachushkin makes it 5-3 there in the second um, it, again, it, it wasn't the best defensive goal either. I mean, it was just kind of like a turnaround shot in the slot. I don't think anybody expected it. I thought Jones was way too deep in his net, um, as well. And, and all the flyers were kind of, I, I don't think anybody expected him to turn around and just shoot it. So that's what happens there. Um, the avalanche, they're such a fast team through the neutral zone, very much like Tampa, what they did to the flyers on Sunday night. Um, and th- they had a lot of chances getting through the zone, through the rush, um, uh, making plays at the blue line and things like that. And, Jones had a couple good saves, but Flyers didn't have much offensively um, in this period. Willman had a good shift um, on the fourth line there. They were winning a lot of puck battles, and Willman had a shot that just trickled wide. Um, the Flyers were starting to get some chances. Um, there was one shot in front that ended up just trickling wide as well. I believe it was Frost in front. Um, he had forced a turnover, sent it in front. Flyers almost scored there. Um, JVR was kind of digging away. Um, Flyers end up getting a power play late. They had some good puck movement. Frost had a tip um, on a shot in front. Yandel um, was passing the puck really well. No call on Konechny. He had a chance to kind of cut through. Um, I was very surprised they didn't call that, honestly. It was a blatant knee-on-knee. Knee. They didn't call anything there. Um, Atkinson did get hurt in this period around the 8-minute mark. Um, blocked a shot with his foot. Um, ends up coming back in the third period, and he scores. Really nice pass there by Hayes in front. Um, and it goes off his stick uh, as he kind of goes down on the one knee. And y- you could tell he was he was kind of hurting because he was wincing after he scored and everything like that. Um, and then the Avalanche would get a power play here. So this was the turning point of this game, obviously, because they get the power play. And it's a 5-on-4, and then with 20 seconds left, um, it's 5-on-3 for those 20 seconds. Avs call timeout. Flyers win the draw. Braun fans on to clear it. Then Atkinson misses on, on the, the second chance to clear it. They send it in front. Nobody picks up Kadri. Decided that. Bam. 6-4. Um, terrible bounce. Terrible break. And it, it's just one of the... That puck has to get out of the zone. I mean, the, the, there's no other way of saying it. There's no other way of shooting, sugarcoating it. Um, and uh, as we'll make it 7-4 a couple minutes later. Really bad turnover there by Yandel behind the net. Joseph would score, and then Scott Lawton would add a shorthanded goal late when the Avs were up three goals and put their first unit power play out, and Lawton would score shorthanded. So um, I guess that's, that's karma. I don't know. Um, look, again, there were a lot of things that I did like in this game. Um, as I said, I like the limblom Couturier connecting line. Drew had a really good game. Limblom finally scores again five goals since October. Um, but again, a lot of bad defensive issues still. Lots of penalties. Um, it felt like the Flyers... We're definitely really starting to get chances, though. Um, later in the second period, I didn't really like the first handful of minutes, but as the second period was moving along, they started to get their chances, um, and I felt like they kind of carried that into the first minute of the first, and they got that, or excuse me, of the third, and then they got that goal, but um, this ended up falling short. Uh, I, I, I did really like Morgan Frost tonight. That is one thing I will say. I thought Frost was fantastic. Uh, made a lot of good plays. Very shifty with the puck. He, he's playing with confidence, but... Mike Yo has said that he still thinks there's a, another gear that Frost can get to. Um, and, and and also, the Avalanche had 50 shots. I mean, the Flyers definitely had to clean that up. And obviously, the next couple of games, you don't have as much firepower as you do, you know, with Tampa and Colorado back-to-back. Flyers have the Devils, Vegas, um, Arizona, Montreal, just, just a few of those teams coming up um, here. So hopefully they can take advantage of things like that. Uh, I thought Kevin Hayes looked really good in this game. Flyers, again, had more puck possession, a lot of quick passing. Again, I think a lot of this is still to build on. Um, and I think it's going to take some time. It, it, essentially, it's, it's quote-unquote baby steps for right now. But, like, you can't really – it's kind of hard to rely on baby steps when you've lost signs trade. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm in the middle of, like, okay, I get it. This is something to build on, but you're still having the same issues. So we'll see what happens coming up with the Flyers. Take on the Devils on Wednesday in New Jersey. Um, hopefully they can take advantage and finally pick up a win for the first time uh, since the uh, beginning of November there. So let me know your guys' thoughts below on this one. Remember, guys, podcast articles, those links are on my channel. And remember to check out Butt Ends and Garrett Group 
Garrett Group Construction, excuse me. Uh, for buttons, you can use code PHI for 10% off your order. And remember to check out Garrett Group Construction. Garrick Group Construction, easy for me to say, um, for any construction needs or anything along those lines. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you all again soon.